right, in today's video, we are gonna be fixing another common S197 problem uh, on the 2005 to 2009 Ford Mustangs. Uh, this includes the V6 and V8 models. As you can see, my battery gauge um, is not reading correctly. It actually doesn't even like to read low. It actually goes way past low. So what we have here um, is a um, stepper motor that has gone bad. The stepper motor is responsible for making the needles function um, and move accordingly. Uh, how I know that this is, uh, let me zoom it in properly, there we go. How I know that this is a bad stepper motor and not a, uh, a, a low battery issue or a charging issue uh, is because uh, when you power on the car, um, it starts right up. I have no problems. Uh, car does not hesitate at all. I've been starting it for the past few days now. The battery has not died. Um, so that has led me to believe that the stepper motor for the battery gauge right here has gone bad. So we got to take out the whole gauge cluster. Um, and then we have to basically get to the motherboard on the gauge cluster and basically solder on a new stepper motor which I've gone ahead and already purchased unfortunately my stepper motors are made in China so it's gonna be Chinese shit and I don't expect it to last but no more than a year <laughs> if that tops so um, the cool thing is they give you about four of them so in the event that that does happen um, you just desolder the old one and solder on a new one uh, I'm gonna try to do this on the AC because it is summertime and it's hot as hell in here um, I'm just gonna run you down how to basically get to the gauge cluster here it's very very easy um, hell it's probably easier than the 98 Mustang that I had um, basically this whole portion this whole front portion comes off it just basically pops out um, you just get like a flathead up behind here and start pulling it towards you um, and it pretty much pops out it's all clipped in it's not even really uh, screwed in or anything uh, all that part of the gauge uh, or uh, the, the um, dash is separate from this so this is the only piece you need to focus on so uh yeah get a flathead pop this thing out start pulling it towards you and eventually you'll get it um and i'll show you what to do in the next video all right so i thought i'd show you really quick too um how i know this is a bad stepper motor you'll see the needle actually move um up and down it'll kind of wiggle a little bit you got to really look for it uh, and that's how you know that the motor is actually struggling. So when I power on the car, give it a second, it's going to be really loud for a quick second. But focus on that needle as uh, it tries to climb up to high. This normally should read in between low and high. It might actually swing a little bit on the high end, uh, but it's mainly going to be towards the center when it's actually reading normal. So let's go ahead and power the car on. So as you can see, the needle is struggling to get anywhere close to the middle. It just keeps kind of going up and down, up and down, and eventually it levels out and stops. So that's how I know I think I have a bad uh, cluster motor here. So, all right, <clears throat> so um, car's on currently, but we're gonna be powering it off here before we actually pull the uh, plugs from the back of the cluster and taking it out. I realize that you actually don't need to take a flathead back here um, to pull it out. You're actually just probably gonna end up gouging the plastic, so let's not do that. What I actually managed to do was I just pulled it from up here and pulled it towards me, the whole top of the uh, part of the dash, and it popped out really easily. Um, and then I uh, set it over in the passenger seat over there. So you got four screws. You got one down there, one up there, and then one in the opposite corner up in there, and then one down in there. Uh, all four of those screws gotta come out, and then you pull the gauge cluster, uh, kind of the top goes inward, and then you pull it out as one whole unit. Um, and then you just gotta unplug it from the back, um, and then we'll bring it inside. Uh, we'll take a look at the motor um, and start pulling apart more of the uh, gauge cluster too, because there's a little bit more things that we have to take off. So let's go ahead and uh, do that right now. Ugly dugly. So we got the screws out, pulled the cluster. Actually, you don't want to pull it backwards. You actually want to flip it forward. Um, so right now, this is the front of the cluster. Uh, the car's still on. I'm going to turn it off here in just a second before we pull that. Uh, so to get these types of clips, it's going to be a little difficult. You got to kind of like push in the center where my index finger is, and then you're going to pull this little bracket, this little gray bracket. It's going to slide down this way. So hold it down. And then you're gonna try to 
pick that gray part of the retainer and you're gonna flip it backward. And this should allow the uh, plug to also come loose and you can pull it out. Um, so that's what we're gonna do now. Uh, the next video you're gonna see me bringing this cluster inside the house so we can work on it further. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna try my best to do this off of a shitty Chinese tripod and my cell phone here. Um, I may not be able to show you me soldering um, the actual circuit board just because I need the full amount of room possible. This thing's actually sitting in front of me, uh, the camera in any way, and this tripod. It's a little awkward to kind of work in this uh, position. Anyways, um, but I will show you how to at least take apart the gauge cluster and get to the internals that we need to get to. Um, so these are your stepper motors. These are the little motors uh, that you will be um, replacing on the uh, circuit board. Uh, these are the things that usually go bad. This one, unfortunately, is a Chinese replacement. So again, I don't expect this thing to last very long, but basically your contact points are these little pins on each side. You see four of them. This is uh, the little dial that actually rotates every time the car is on or when it's uh, reading a uh, approximate value. Um, so yeah, we're going to be replacing this little guy. Um, and yes, they gave me four of them. Here's the other three, but we aren't replacing uh, any other any of the other ones. Just this battery one here. Um, I should also note that you should probably take a picture of where these needles sit accordingly uh, before even taking off the needles, because we will have to take off the needles to uh, get to the circuit board. So take a picture of their placement. Um, I couldn't tell you on the battery one. I don't even remember. I think it's probably safe to say to put it on the red. Uh, you see how the oil gauge is? Basically copy it just as you see it from the oil gauge onto this, so it should actually be in the red zone um, uh, when you put the needle back on. Um, so copy everything as you see when it is not on uh, and put the needles in their corresponding location. And you should have it pretty much damn near accurate. So let's go ahead and start pulling this shit apart. Um, so to pull this off, uh, we are gonna flip it over. Here's the back side of it. As you can see, there's these little clips on the side. You basically pull them down. Uh, you may have to do this with a few hands here, or it could be pretty easy. I think we got some on the top. Try not to slide the plastic, otherwise you're gonna be scratching your face here. Don't follow my footsteps, I just did that. There we go. Getting somewhere. Come on, come on. There we go. All right. So here's the front face. We are going to set that aside. Set it on the floor. Don't need it. All right. So here are your gauges. Now all the needles need to come off of the gauge. Um, so you got, depending on your vehicle, mine is the premium option. So it gives me a oil gauge and a light, um, a, a, sorry, a battery uh, indicator. So these two are actually part of the premium options. Usually most base model Mustangs actually have the uh, little reader in the center um, and they do not have these gauges. Anyways, you get the idea. Uh, so yeah, so the needles have to come off and then this little plate should come off and then uh, yeah, um, I'm gonna take a picture though, so I'm gonna pause the video here. I'm gonna take a picture of my gauge needles before I even screw with them, like I mentioned. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do that really quick and I'll be right back with you guys into the next step. I <sighs> thought I'd mention really quick, since I didn't mention it. Um, to be able to pull these needles off, you can get yourself some kind of tweezers. Um, these are meant for uh, board repair, that kind of thing, which is exactly what we're doing. Um, you could also probably get a fork up under it and pry upwards, but you might uh, risk damaging the front of the face of the uh, gauge cluster, so I wouldn't advise doing that. Um, so get yourself the proper tool, some uh, needle nose pliers, uh, not needle nose pliers, I'm retarded. Um, uh, tweezers, those could also work too, maybe, uh, but the correct tool is one of these. So you basically get up under it. So we're gonna go ahead and try it with this one. All right, so I've gone ahead and taken the arrows or the needles off of the uh, um, gauge cluster here. Um, so basically what I had done, I couldn't really do it on camera because 
I didn't want to end up breaking one and having that be embarrassing. Uh, so basically, you'll take your, uh, but I can reenact it here. You'll take your little um, needle nose here, or your little tweezers, I should say. Uh, so it'll be like that. You pull up under and you carefully pry up and start wiggling this upward with your hand here. And eventually it'll come off. He's got to be very gentle with it because these are very, very brittle. Uh, yeah, you want to be very careful not to break those. Um, anyways, so now we're going to get the clips along the edges of the um, um, gauge cluster here. So there's about one in this corner here, two, three, four, uh, five in that corner as I sling all my needles all over the place. Uh, there we go. And then there's going to be some on the back here as well got two on the back it looks like and you basically just want to pry these you may need to get a flat head maybe back there um, but you need to basically pry this backwards um, carefully without breaking the plastic to basically uh, take this back plate off I'm gonna do that off camera right now you may need to take a flat head I'll let you know what I use to get it off alrighty uh, so I've gone ahead and taken the top plate off here. Um, so I actually use my hands for the most part and I just got the ones on the front. So I pulled these three off um, and then it came off pretty easily. Um, then I just got my little um, tweezers, pried back on this little corner and just started working my way around it with my hand. So we're gonna put the, ga uh, the f gauge face on the floor as well. Uh, and then we're gonna lift the circuit board out of its housing here. There's our circuit board. Make sure not to set this on the carpet or anything that could potentially grab electrostatic, uh, well, electrostatic, electricity, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so there's our circuit board. If we flip it back, there are our stepper motors. So the one that's bad is going to be this guy right here. So, uh, to take these off, if I'm not mistaken, they are soldered on right here. See these little points right here? So that's where they're soldered on. What we need to do is we need to desolder this, uh, these little contact points right here. I'll try to bring it up closer so you can see where. So these are the contact points. There's contact points right there. You're gonna basically, that's where you're gonna be desoldering. <clears throat> and eventually, this little stepper motor is going to be able to come off by just prying off of uh, off on it, uh, and it should come off pretty easily. Uh, I thought about it too while I've already taken out this little motherboard. I think I'm going to replace some of the LEDs for certain indications, um, like my. Uh, uh, I had to stop the video just so I can think of what it was. Cruise control. Damn. There we go. So. Uh, I think it's one of these up here in the center right here that controls the cruise control light. Um, it's usually green. I think I'm going to replace that and make it white, either white or red. I have quite a few little LED diodes. Um, it's the same thing, honestly. If you ever actually want to replace LEDs on your gauge cluster, um, however, um, I have the, the um, my color feature on this motherboard. So I don't really have to mess with any of this part of it, but I uh, can mess with these ones that are basically a set in stone color. Um, these ones, um, this one's green. I don't know about any of the other ones. I got to see what these little options are. Some of them don't even have uh, any LEDs on them because it's probably an option that's not on the car. As you can see, this one's empty. Um, so I'll probably be replacing this. But anyways, you want to know how to replace this motor, so let's get started. I'm going to try to see if I can desolder this on camera so you can see what it is that I'm actually doing. Though, if I find it's a little too difficult for me, then I'm not going to show you the desoldering process. I'm going to automatically assume at this point that you have some kind of soldering knowledge. It's not really complicated at all. We're probably going to heat up our soldering iron to about anywhere between 450 and, uh, not 450, sorry, 350 and 400 degrees, somewhere around there until we get it, the uh, solder to heat up enough to melt so we can clean it up <clears throat> and take the motor off. Um, and then we're gonna apply it with new solder um, and that's it, the, the repair is done. It, it's a pretty straightforward and easy repair. Um, it's just a matter of being very, very careful 
not to damage any of the uh, circuitry on this uh, when you're soldering. Uh, applying too much excess heat uh, can destroy certain components on a motherboard. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's see if I'm able to do this. I think our iron is probably hot enough. Yeah, it seems pretty toasty. Uh, I'm gonna try to wrap it around the tripod here. All right, so the way soldering works, I'm using, I don't know if my camera's gonna focus. Of course not. We're not in that uh, advanced technology yet. <laughs> um, so we're using a tip type of, uh, we're using basically a tip for the top of the soldering iron. Um, I think it's probably gonna be the most effective at getting this out. Um, so what you wanna do is you basically wanna take your plunger, get it ready here, and you wanna basically touch the contact point where the solder is on the motherboard. Let me first see if the solder is gonna even melt. No, we need to bring up the temperature just a little bit. It seems like it needs to be at about, uh, we're gonna say that's probably like 480, 480, 480 degrees. Uh, 450 didn't really quite do it. it took a second to uh, get that solder there. Uh, so as you see, let's see if I can try to zoom in on the camera here so you can kind of see what I'm kind of doing. That might help a little bit. Let me try to point it downward. Again, I don't have a proper setup for this, so I apologize. I don't really do this stuff on camera. All right, there we go. That should work. I zoomed in there. Uh, so now you can kind of see what I'm doing a little bit better. So here's your contact points. You got one here, one there, one there, and one there again. So. Take your plunger. We are now at about 480 degrees, near 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, basically, you want to touch the tip here where the solder is until it melts. There we go, just like that. We've cleared the solder from that spot. So we got one contact point done. Now we're gonna do it on the next one here. Honestly, I need more light for this. I should have probably used my camera light. Uh, you know, we're gonna do that. I don't think that's gonna help a whole lot, but it's better than nothing. All right, so let's go ahead and get this contact point. We are now charged for our plunger. You wanna do this quick. You wanna use as not too much heat, as less heat as possible. I don't think I got that one really good. Hold on, I really gotta look. There we go, got it. All right, so that point is done. Now we gotta get these two. This one's a little tricky too. It doesn't even look like it's got a whole lot of solder on it. All right, that one's kinda done. Call that one good. All right, let's get this one. I don't think I got that one really good either. These contact points are really, really small, so it's really hard to get them. All right, I think I got it. So if you think you got the contact points and you cleared all the uh, old solder off the board, Let's go ahead and bring it up close here. So that's what it kind of looks like. I may or may not have gotten all of it. If, they, if you find out that you didn't get it, then just keep working at the contact points, trying to get as much of that solder around that contact point, that little pin that you see sticking up as much as possible. So let's go ahead and flip it over and see if we can take it off. So that's the one that we're working on. So let's go ahead and try to wiggle it off. So we did not get all of it off. As you can see, it's still pretty stuck on there. So that's the gist of what we're trying to do. We're trying to basically get as much of the solder off around these little pins as much as possible. Um, and eventually it'll come off. Um, 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put a little bit of some flux around these little pins, because uh, it might help with picking up some of the solder. And what, that's probably what I should have done at the start of this. But let's see. So you are seeing firsthand experience of solder work. So we're gonna kind of coat that pin right there with some solder, or sorry, flux. All right, let's get this one here. And when we finally put in the new motor and, uh, you know, put the new solder on and, uh, you know, make this pin, these pins official with the new solder, uh, we are going to clean up the flux around these contact points because it, it's been told that they can corrode um, metal. Uh, so it's just a professional thing to do to wipe off excess flux when uh, it is not needed. So let's go ahead and try this again. Get our plunger here and our soldering iron and give this another go now that we got flux around there. Should help with picking up a little bit of the uh, a little bit of the um, old solder. Let's try that one one more time. Let's try this one. I'm not worried about damaging the um, old pins on this because again, uh, we aren't going to be reusing this motor. All right, we're back. Um, I figured it out. I figured out the trick to it. So I already got it um, loose. Um, I put it back in just to give you a reference of what it is I did. All right, so you can barely, barely make out the contact points. You can kind of see them sticking up right there. They're actually coming loose because it's already been screwed with, but there you go. So now you can see the contact points kind of raised up there. So what I did was I got as much of the solder around these contact points as much as possible. Um, and eventually, um, if you take the soldering iron and put it against the pin, and then you take uh, the back, uh, well, you put it against the pin and eventually it'll kind of break itself loose. Um, you'll hear the pin kind of make a little bit of a crack noise and then the pin will actually come loose. And that's how you know that it's detached from the solder. And if it decides it wants to um, solder itself back together, then it's probably possible that you got more um, old solder on the contact point and you still need to take off more of the solder off. Eventually you hear the pin pry loose from the solder and that's how you know you're golden. Um, and then eventually you'll be able to pull back and pull off the old motor. Now remember when I said that you have to put it in the correct orientation? Well, these only go on one way anyways, because if you notice, the holes are already cut out to the uh, how they're supposed to be located. So you don't really have to worry about the correct orientation. So um, I don't know what indicates this thing is bad, but obviously we do know it's bad. Um, this is actually a US made motor. <laughs> so I'm kind of sad that I have to put on a Chinese one, but at any rate, um, so here's our new one. So this is going to be our new one. I'm going to place that right there. Press it in carefully. I'm going to take it off for a second so I know it's in. All right, we got it in. It even has a different part number on the back of it. That's how you know it's Chinese. <laughs> All right, so we got it pushed in. So there's our new one on the bottom left right there, pushed in. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of some more flux here. Again, guys, this is a very easy repair. This isn't really complicated at all. As you can see, anybody with a slight bit of soldering knowledge um, can do this. So, I mean, I, I learned how to solder quite literally with a uh, putting on these LED diodes that you see along the rim here. Um, I didn't do it on this though, I did it on the interior uh, HVAC controls and all that. It's the same concept, honestly. Um, soldering, don't let it intimidate you. It's actually really, really easy. It's just putting it at the right temperature, taking your time, make sure you don't put too much heat on the contact points because I have damaged contact points before. Uh, but you know, if you break something, you live and let learn. Uh, it's not the end of the world. If you do decide, or if you do damage one of your circuit boards for your uh, for your um, gauge cluster, well, you can always find another one on eBay or you know the junkyard. 
sure you got to spend more money but you know you learned you gained experience through your failures so it is what it is uh all right so you take your soldering iron you grab some solder some brand new solder this is uh i don't know i got this off amazon so it's uh, slightly flux but this is lead based so you want to make sure you wash your hands thoroughly after touching this stuff um, so what you want to do is you want to take your solder here in one hand you want to put it against the contact point these contact points are really 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 small so it's gonna be a little tricky here but you put it up against the contact point let me see if I can kind of zoom in a little bit better here let me bring the camera back just a wee bit Actually, I could probably keep it in the same location, but we'll move it up a little bit. There we go. So, you take your solder, put it on the contact point here, and then we are going to burn the solder onto that contact point. It's a little tricky to do. There we go. I think I did it. Let me make sure I did it. No, that one's gonna need a little more. Yeah, this one's a little bit of a tricky one to do just because it's it's such a tiny contact point, so it's a little difficult to do. There we go. Now we're talking. I think we did it. Yeah, there's a little bit there, but we need a little bit more. You can probably burn some of the already placed solder on that contact point. You just want to make sure you have enough so that way it makes a good clean connection because what it is is the solder helps create a connection with the contact point if that makes sense um, otherwise if you just put the motor there and you don't put any solder this it won't have a really good connection it might be touching the connection ever so slightly but uh, uh it's going to keep you know the motor may work may not work it'll keep turning itself on and off and you don't want that to happen so i want to make sure this is nice and caked up too much solder is uh, also bad so you want to make sure there's a nice balance there so now it kind of made a ball again my soldering skills aren't the best too guys like i'm really bad at this for the most part now i kind of feel like i got a little too much there we go i think now that's good See, that's how it should look. Let me go ahead and place this up in the camera. So we've been working at the top left one up there. So this guy right here where my index finger is, as you can see, kind of looks like a bit of a nipple. That's what it should look like. All the way around the whole circumference of that contact point. And that, I'm gonna call that a good, a good solder. So now the next ones to do, so this guy and the other ones on the other side. So let's go ahead and do that too. All right, grab our soldering iron. All right, where are we at? Okay, there we are. Okay, wait a minute. No, we're wrong area. That would be the speedometer. We do not want to mess with that. Okay. See how that one looks. I'm gonna call that good. Yeah, we got another clean connection there. So that one's good. All right, time to do the last two. All right, that one's looking good too. These ones are a little bit easier than that first one that we started with. So if you guys want some knowledge, the, the reason why we put flux before we even begin soldering is because, ooh, that's a bad solder, hold on. There we go, that's a little better. Not the greatest, but a lot better. This one could probably use just a tiny bit more. 
very, very little bit. Um, I'll explain myself here. I gotta focus at the same time. I can't really talk and do this at the same time. I get distracted very easily. There we go, well, that's cleaner. All right, there we go, and we're done. Our new motor is installed. Um, so why we put flux, uh, this nasty goop on the contact point before we put solder on is because it helps the solder spread evenly across the contact point. Um, if you try doing this without flux, it's gonna be a living nightmare. Um, it might be able to adhere to the whatever's left on the uh, contact point from the old solder, but it makes life so much easier with solder when you put flux around the uh, contact point. So a little bit of some uh, tips there. Um, so I'm going to ugly doogly. Time for some reassembly here. Uh, to reassemble it, I already gone ahead and replaced some of the LEDs that I wanted to do. So the turn signal LEDs are now actually red. Maybe I'll showcase that at the end of this video here um, instead of green. Um, the cruise control light is also red now instead of green. Um, I didn't mess with any of the other LEDs here. I just left them alone uh, because I don't want to make everything red because then if something, if something important does happen like a check engine light, I'll, I'll know exactly what that light means when I see the color. All right, so um, to put this back together, you get the bottom housing, the black housing, and then you go ahead and lightly put it in here. By the way, I thought I'd mention as well, if you ever wonder how to change out the chime for your, um, you know, do a custom chime maybe, this is your chime module right here, this little gray box. So that's the thing that makes that bing bing noise every time you open the door, just a little heads up there. In case you wanna do some more custom work. Um, so let's see here in here I don't know if that snaps into place I don't believe it does it just kind of sets in there yeah alrighty so it should just kind of set in there make sure that you clean off your um, your little speedometer gauge here uh, not speedometer um, your mileage gauge here make sure that it's cleaned and wiped off that way you don't have any fingerprint uh, fingerprints on it uh, all right and then the same thing goes with the face here so here's the face. Make sure this area right here, this little green film area right here has also got no fingerprints. I've just been touching it like a retard, so now I gotta clean it, as well as the back of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe that real quick. Check it out, yeah, we good. All right, so you're gonna take the face, and you're going to just snap it into place. No, I may need to do this with two hands. we go the face is now on now let's go ahead I think I'm gonna clean up the face a little bit more though because I've been touching it so make sure all your fingerprints are off it it makes it look pretty bad you don't want to have fingerprints all over your gauge cluster probably wipe this down with some Windex probably something that's not abrasive and I'm gonna call that probably pretty good to be honest all right so now we're going to put the needles on in the correct positions. Uh, so I'm going to have to pause the video for right now. Um, basically, you just want to put the needles on. The little studs from the uh, stepper motors are right there. Put them on that little uh, stud right there and put them in the zero marks and in the red marks for the most part. Uh, and you should be pretty solid. Um, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to look at that photo that we took to make sure that they are in the right position for the battery one. Since that one was broken, I'm just going to leave it in that little red spot right there, exactly on the red line, and it should give us a proper reading. Once we uh, turn the car on, we're going to see if um, the battery light is working and functional again. So let's go ahead and do that now. <sighs> All right, so the arrows are now on the board and it should look something like this. Everything should be in the zero mark. Nothing should be uh, anywhere on the 20, 40, 60, 80, or anything. It should all just 
uh, bottom out at zero. And the oil pressure one could probably be moved a little bit. There we go. Kind of looks different from a different perspective. If I've tilted it, it looks like the oil pressure is actually more low, but if I put it straight, it looks straight. So it's kind of weird uh, how that is. Um, Alrighty, so I've gone ahead and cleaned it. Uh, so all you have to do is just snap it into place. Uh, I believe it goes up and over. It's been a hot minute since I just did this. Alrighty, so as far as reassembly goes, same way it goes in, same way it goes out, vice versa. Uh, I've already went ahead and plugged it in. As you can see, my um, theft light's already working. Uh, so let's go ahead and start up the car and see if it fixed my battery indicator light. Let's pray, right guys? some issues here uh, the needles are a little bit off which is a little weird to me um, I'm thinking uh, I'm thinking they got to go on the, a little bit higher up but I'm not entirely sure as you can see my battery indicator light is fixed but it's not quite in the normal spot that it once was actually um, but it did fix the issue so I mean that's pretty much a do job success right there or I don't know. I don't know how you say that, but um, yeah, I don't know about the uh, temperature there. But I bet if we turned it off, maybe it'll actually fix itself or level out. I don't know. Uh, we can try that right now. Okay. So yeah, we definitely have an issue with our uh, temperature gauge there. But otherwise, it looks like it is functioning correctly. I don't know if I'm going to have to replace the temperature one, too. That one was working. Uh, now it seems like it may not be working or it's just got to be adjusted. So hopefully that um, wraps it up um, again. So you got four bolts to put it back together. And that's basically how you fix a uh, stepper motor on a gauge cluster. This doesn't just apply to Mustangs. I think a lot of modern vehicles these days have stepper motors, uh, whereas the older models like my 98 had actual, like these little mechanical motors that you basically pop on and off. Um, so hopefully that wraps that up. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to um, uh, get back to me. Oh, and I thought I'd show you my uh, red LEDs for my turn signals. They look a little orange on camera, but they uh, rest assured they're actually more of a red so that's kind of cool now i got red turn signals so anyways i'll see you guys in the next video peace out